This Rise and Shine podcast series has been made possible by the generosity of the Zeitelman Family Foundation, which is committed to the unity and continuity of the Jewish people through meaningful and relevant Jewish education and wisdom. Understand that it was me who steps outside of the family patterns, and so it was up to me to be more accommodating, more understanding, because the person who changes the rules of the game has the burden of social adjustment upon them. This is Rise and Shine, a podcast that offers timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations to fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. Here is Adrian Gold Davis. By the time that you'll hear this podcast, I will have gone to Israel in the middle of of wartime to do a solidarity mission with a hundred other women. You know, when I made the decision to go, I felt like I had to tell my mother, who's 89 years old, and she worries, understandably. I am one of four devoted siblings, devoted to each other and to my mother. So it wasn't simple to tell her that I was heading into a war zone, but really raising me was sort of a lifelong war zone for her anyway. Anyway, thank God she and I have a beautiful relationship today, filled with love and mutual respect, but it wasn't always so. And I think that the reason for this was, in part, my stubborn refusal to take any sort of direction, even as a child. I can't imagine what it would have been like to have a child myself who refuses to be parented, who will not yield. And this trait that I was born with needed to be addressed in my own personal development. I needed to learn to yield, to be less controlling in my marriage, in my parenting, and in general, in my friendships. I needed to relinquish my penchant for complete control, to give someone else a chance to set the tone. So... Deciding to go to Israel during wartime would not be the first time I made decisions and choices that were counter the culture of my family of origin. I opted to live and raise my kids in the city, while the rest of my family is devotedly suburban. I became ritually observant, kosher and Sabbath observant, while my family is predominantly secular and intermarried. I sent my kids to a Jewish day school while all of them were within the public school system where I also was raised. But we are the most unified family. Somehow, we have been able to create unity even absent any uniformity. I've been thinking about how we managed to navigate that, what our special sauce was, so maybe we could pour it on this fractured world. And then something became imminently clear to me and helped me understand the rebellions and dissenting positions with my own kids. Here's what I realized. I was old enough, 40 precisely, to understand that it was me that changed the rules of engagement in my family, me who steps outside of the family patterns. And so, therefore, it was up to me to be more accommodating, more indulgent, more understanding. Because the person who changes the rules of the game has the burden of social adjustment upon them. There are big sensitivities here, especially in family life. So there's this beautiful concept in the Torah that we find in a midrash. A midrash is one of our texts that provides context and explanations between the lines, as it were. Rabbi Svi Freeman explains it like this. Every human is unique, and every human being is a copy of the prototype human being, Adam. Therefore, every human being must say, for my sake, the world was created. He then goes on to say the following. Why was the human being created as an individual? And this is what the rabbis of the Talmud ask. The Talmud is the central text of rabbinic Judaism and the primary source of Jewish religious law and Jewish theology. So here's what it says. To teach you that one who destroys a single human life 
is as though he has destroyed an entire world, and one who saves a single human life is as though he saved an entire world. And that's not just a figurative hyperbole. The Talmud provides a vivid, practical application of this principle. Here it goes. A caravan of people traveling on the road is accosted by strangers who tell them, give us one of you and we will kill him. And if you refuse, we will kill all of you. Even if all of them will be killed, they cannot hand over a single soul. And this ruling, it's stunning. And yet, within it lies the fundamental rejection of totalitarian fascism that has become an essential building block of post-World War II modernity. The individual is sacred. Nothing not the good of the state, not even the lives of the majority, can override the sanctity of the individual. It also reflects the intuitive experience of the human being. The human being, as he or she becomes aware of his or her own existence, experiences something bewildering, even shocking. There are billions of they's, you's, he's, and she's out there but only one I. So as I see it, peaceful family life requires an understanding that while there is only one I, there are in fact they's who are also unique and also an entire universe. So how do we honor our personal importance and power while still remembering that the reality of the other is equally compelling and important and valuable to them? And to God? When do we get to go with our gut and answer our own calls? And when do we yield to the collective of our families, our communities, and our people? In no way did I want my travels and my decisions to make my mother frightened or miserable. And frankly, my kids weren't too impressed either with my decision, and nor were my siblings. And Jewish law is very clear about not putting oneself in danger and that the mitzvah of saving a life overrides all other laws. And certainly, causing stress to our parents is not acceptable and falls under the commandment to honor one's mother and father. So, as a reformed, defiant person, as a woman who now values yielding as much as asserting my independence— What made me make the decision to go? Well, in his essay about honoring parents, Rabbi Shraga Simmons writes the following. He says, There are three specific areas that due to their intense personal nature, a person is not required to respect his parents' wishes. Choosing whom they will marry, maximizing one's Torah studies, and wanting to move to Israel. Now, while I wasn't moving to Israel per se, I felt like the decision to go and offer support emotionally and spiritually and even financially was powerful enough to make the decision to override my family's worries. You know, there was a time when I didn't give a hoot what anyone thought or felt about what I decided I wanted to do. The result of that defiant free thinking was relationships that were not as close as they could have been. You know, there were years of lost opportunities because I refused to play nice in the sandbox. In fact, my very identity was formed around that defiance, and it cost me greatly. This week, can you take a close look at how those around you might be affected by your changing the rules of engagement mid-game? Can you ask yourself whether you're missing out on interpersonal closeness because of a refusal to yield, your refusal to ever relinquish control? Can you examine how perhaps while guarding your own eye, you might also acknowledge the equal status of someone else's? Because while we want everyone to accommodate our choices and decisions, it may well be that we've turned a blind eye to how their own universe is impacted. And perhaps a bit of compassion 
and recognition that each of us is in fact an entire universe, well, that might just be the special sauce that will heal this broken world. Thanks for listening to Rise and Shine. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Adrian again next time for more timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations that fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. This podcast was sponsored by the Zeitelman Family Foundation. Spread the wisdom. Inspire Jewish individuals around the globe by supporting Momentum's podcasts. To sponsor, contact podcast at MomentumUnlimited.org. You're listening to a Momentum podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.